Hey lovelies, welcome back to another episode of our Meal Prep Made Easy series. As you know, all month long, I'm sharing delicious meal prep menus that you can prepare on Sunday and then enjoy all week long. Today's meal prep is really exciting. It's full of comfort food classics that you probably had when you were a kid. We're making some meatloaf and potatoes and Brussels sprouts. The menu is really hearty and delicious. I think you're gonna love it. Before I get to that though, it's really important that I tell you that all of these delicious recipes plus five other menus are all included in my brand new Meal Prep Made Easy ebook. You can check out all of the details in the description box below. And without further ado, let's kick things off with my yummy creamy chicken soup. It is an absolute cinch to prepare. I'm doing this on the stove, but you could also do this in a slow cooker if you wanted to. For this recipe, I'm getting started by melting some butter over medium high heat, and then I'm going to add all sorts of yummy vegetables to this soup. We're using some onion, some celery, some carrot, and some mushrooms in this recipe. I'm going to let those all sweat it out for three or four minutes until they start to soften up, and then I'm going to add a few cloves of minced garlic. We're gonna let that garlic become nice and fragrant and then I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of flour. This is going to help our soup thicken up. I'm going to let that flour cook for about a minute, stirring it constantly so it doesn't burn, and then I'm going to add the rest of my ingredients. So I've got some chicken broth, some milk, some cooked shredded chicken, then I'm just going to season all of this up with some dried thyme, some fresh rosemary, and a bay leaf. Now you could go ahead and use fresh thyme in this, but I actually didn't have any, so dried thyme it is. I'm gonna bring this all to a nice simmer. You don't wanna bring it to a boil, otherwise you will scald your milk and bad things happen when milk scalds. And then you can reduce your heat to medium low, pop on the lid and let this get delicious over 15 minutes or so. And it's really as simple as that. After 15 minutes, this soup is ready to be enjoyed. You're just gonna to wanna to remove the stem from your rosemary and your bay leaf and then season it up with some salt and some pepper. It is the perfect soup to enjoy on a chilly autumn evening, and I know you and your family are going to love it, so go ahead and make a double batch because it freezes superbly. Superbly. For our main this week, we are making these grab-and-go mini turkey meatloaves. I'm getting started with some ground turkey in a bowl, and to that I'm adding a whole lot of shredded zucchini. I love this recipe because instead of breadcrumbs, we're using the shredded zucchini as our binder. They add a ton of great moisture and keep this recipe gluten-free. To that, I'm going to add two eggs, some minced garlic, and then a whole lot of flavor. I've got some tomato paste, some Dijon mustard, and some Worcestershire sauce. You can leave all of your comments about how I pronounce Worcestershire sauce in the comments below. It's totally fine, I can handle it. I'm gonna season this all up with some onion powder, some cumin, some dry thyme, and some salt and pepper. You can actually use whatever seasonings you like, so go ahead and get creative. I'm going to mix all of this up until it's well combined, and then I am going to scoop it into a prepared muffin tin. In this case, I'm using these awesome silicone muffin liners, a, because they make these really portable, but B, because they are a lot easier to clean than your muffin tin. We all agree on this team that the worst job in the kitchen is actually cleaning the muffin tin, so much so that I will leave it soaking sometimes for two or three days, hoping that the magical dish fairy will come down and do it for me. That still has yet to happen. Then we pop these beauties in the oven at 375 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes. You'll wanna use a meat thermometer to make sure they've reached an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how you know they're done. About five minutes before the cooking is complete, you can brush a little barbecue sauce on top. This adds a ton of wonderful smoky sweet flavor to these. And then you pop them back into the oven for another five minutes and it gets all caramelized and delicious. And then they're ready to be enjoyed. I like enjoying them with these fantastic salt and vinegar potatoes I'm about to show you. For these salt and vinegar roasted potatoes, I'm getting started with some red potatoes that I have just given a rough chop to. As you can see, I've left my skins on because the whole idea of peeling these simply doesn't appeal to me. Just gonna let that one marinate for a sec. 
We are going to toss these in a little bit of olive oil, some apple cider vinegar, some garlic powder, some salt, and some pepper. We're gonna give it all a good toss and into the oven these beauties go at 375 degrees for between 25 and 35 minutes. You want them to get nice and roasty and golden and delicious. And then about five minutes before they're finished cooking, you're going to add some fresh rosemary and a little bit more apple cider vinegar. These are oh so good and totally remind me of salt and vinegar potato chips, which happen to be one of my very favorite things. Now mom always told us to eat our Brussels sprouts, but the problem in my house, no offense mom, was that she would boil the Brussels sprouts. And let me tell you, that for me was not so delicious. I like roasting my Brussels sprouts. They get super crispy and golden and they will change how you feel about Brussels sprouts. I promise you. Don't hate me, mom. For these sprouts, I've just trimmed them and cut them in half. I'm going to toss them in a little bit of olive oil, some garlic powder, some salt, and some pepper. We're gonna give it all a good toss and then pop them into the oven for between 15 and 20 minutes or until they start to get nice and golden and crispy on the outside. You'll wanna toss them once or twice during the cooking process to make sure they get brown evenly. What I love about these is they retain those beautiful crispy bits that are full of delicious flavor. These beauties can be stored in your refrigerator for up to five days, so you can have Brussels sprouts all week long. I'm gonna pass this recipe along to my mom. <laughs> those are fighting words. <laughs> For lunch this week, we are going to be indulging in some incredibly flavorful roast beef wraps. These are full of really classic flavors. I'm getting started with some whole wheat tortillas. You can really use any kind of tortilla you like. And I'm just going to mix up a really simple horseradish mayo for this recipe. And of course, that involves mixing some horseradish and some mayo. That's it. We're gonna spread that on our tortilla. And then we're going to top this with some peppery arugula, some thinly sliced roast beef, some shredded white cheddar, some tomatoes, some onions, and then we're going to roll these beauties up. You can go ahead and make a nice big batch the last in your refrigerator for three or four days. And that's a wrap on lunch. Moving on to our breakfast for the week, we are making some apple pie baked oatmeal. Now, if you've never tried baked oatmeal, you are in for a treat because it has all of the goodness of oatmeal, but you can eat it on the go. I'm getting started with some old fashioned rolled oats in my bowl. To that, I'm adding some milk, some applesauce, some eggs that I just gently whisked. I'm also adding some vanilla extract, some baking powder, some cinnamon, and a whole lot of grated apple. We're gonna mix all of that together and then we're going to pour this into a baking dish. Now it's really important to grease your baking dish well because these do love to stick. We're gonna bake these beauties at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes or so or until the center is set. Then you're just gonna let it cool and cut it into squares. These can be enjoyed cold straight from the fridge or heated up in the microwave with a little bit of butter. For our snack this week, I am using another classic flavor combination. It's my chocolate peanut butter yogurt dip. And let me tell you, this stuff is amazing on anything. The magic all starts in a bowl with some vanilla yogurt. To that, I'm adding some cocoa powder, some peanut butter, and a little maple syrup for sweetness. You just give that goodness a good stir, and what you end up with is this incredibly flavorful, but also super light and fluffy dip that is perfect with fresh fruit. I really hope you guys love this week's menu as much as I do, and that you will give it a try in your very own kitchen. If you do, you must tweet me, Instagram me, or Snapchat me a photo, because I love seeing your creations. Keep in mind that all of these tasty recipes, plus five more original meal prep menus, are available in my third Meal Prep Made Easy ebook. If you haven't checked out ebooks one and two, I highly recommend you do that as well. All of those details are in the description box below. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more meal prep deliciousness where this came from.